The chances are you've clicked on this video to find out what the secret is to be wealthy. And I'll tell you right up front, the secret is, there's no secret. To build wealth, you need to live below your means, invest the balance wisely, and allow compound interest to build your assets. And eventually your assets will provide you with an income that will replace your job. And bingo, you're now wealthy. You can now spend all your time doing as you please without the financial concerns that everybody else has. But it's not quite as simple as that. We know this because the wealthy are in the vast minority of people. So the question should be, how do we move from the broke majority to the wealthy minority? To break it down simply, we have to adopt new lifestyle changes and adopt new money habits. Now, will that be easy? No. Will it be quick? Absolutely not. But will it be worth it? Well, the question I ask myself is what's the alternative? Working to 65 plus, relying on the lottery, or even saving all your money in the bank? Now, probably the vast majority of people do not want to work past 65. I certainly don't play the lottery. And putting money in a bank and trying to save, at best, will store it. It's not going to grow your money. So building enough wealth to support you and your family is achievable, even from zero. And there are a few ways of doing it. I'm going to give you a few strategies that you can choose from, depending on your strengths and your goals. Now, in my research, I found hundreds of ways of making money, but these ones here are achievable and doable. The key thing is they can be done alongside your job and you can literally start from zero. I'm really excited about this. Okay, let's get into it. Now, to start building wealth, you will need money. Money and time are going to be your two greatest tools in building wealth. Now, the younger you are, the greater the benefit you'll get from compound interest. But more on that later. Right now, I want to focus about money and how to make it. You'll need to maximize your income and use a disposable portion of it. When we started, we managed to put 10% of our income aside for investing, but we soon got it up to 20%, and that's the target I would suggest you go for. Now, some people are not going to have any disposable income from the salary. So how do we get that 10 or 20% to invest? The first thing that will make a big difference is a comprehensive budget of your salary and all your monthly outgoings. Now, once you've done your budget, if you still don't have your 10%, make a few cutbacks until you get to it. Now, I'm not going to go into that here. We've touched on this in previous videos, and I'll leave a link to those below. But for now, we'll get to that 10% and we'll move on. Now, to make the difference up and get up to our target of 20%, we need to earn more. This will mean a side hustle, a part-time job, lessons to students, or something. Something you can do on the side to get up to the 20%. Now, if you're like me and you don't have a lot of spare time, you can always consider job hopping. This is when you go to a competitor and offer your services to them. Some people do this every two to four years and get up to a 25% pay rise in the process, or even more. But the bottom line here is you need your 10 to 20% and you need to find a way to get it. And rest assured, there is a way. Now, second thing we need to do here is debt pay down. You need to eliminate all your debt and have a strategy to pay it off. Now, I'm not talking about your mortgage here. I'm a firm believer in not paying down your mortgage if you've got a good rate and rather invest your money instead. No, I'm talking about consumer debt. Credit cards, car loans, store credit, lines of credit. Start with the highest rate and pay off a bit each month until they're all eliminated. And if you've done your budget in part one, you've already highlighted and reduced some future costs. But make no mistake, consumer debt is what keeps most people broke and broke for life. Up until the age of 47, I was spending all my disposable income and a bit more on consumer goods and services. If I didn't make the change three years ago, I would still be broke now. In fact, I'd be even more broke because I was using credit and lines of credit to do so. I now have no investments, no properties, and no money invested in the stock market. That's a scary thought. It's amazing what you can do if you can just stop spending money and get money to work for you. Now, it will take time, but every bit of debt you pay off will be a guaranteed return. For every dollar you put down, your interest has reduced that a little bit more. And if you struggle to stop shopping like I did, then cut your cards up. Eventually, you'll learn the financial skills to use them responsibly. Until then, snip snip. Now, learning new money habits and sticking to them will involve a mindset change. Put simply, a mindset change is understanding something in a different way that will benefit your life. New money habits, solution-based thinking, positive mental attitude, growth and learning mindset, these are all new ways to look at the things impacting on your life. It's these mindset changes that can help you find that 20% each month. It will help you find a new income source. It will force you to look at money as a tool to grow wealth, rather than just as something to spend on stuff. I started changing my mindset by reading books, but this evolved into watching videos and audiobooks. They challenged me to change my thinking and my relationship with money. It's a gradual process, but I have had some genuine light bulb moments along the way. Now to build life-changing wealth, we have to invest money and get it to work for us and not the other way around. Investing is key as it uses compound interest to grow money, allowing the principal to remain and the interest to support a lifestyle. The longer we invest, 
the bigger the compound interest snowballs, so it's critical we start as soon as possible. Time is our greatest ally here, allowing even the smallest contributions to grow into epic proportions. The longer we invest, the greater the returns, growing exponentially. As Albert Einstein famously said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Investing also protects our money from inflation. This is the declining value of money over time, and it affects everyone. As an example we can all understand, in the year 2000, the average movie theater ticket was $5.39. In today's terms, it's $10.79. That's inflation. It eats away at our money, even if it's in a savings account. In fact, leaving it in a bank account, it will just depreciate over time and it gets reduced. Investing in the stock market with an average return of 9-10%, to your money is not only protected, but it will grow and it will compound. If you were to save $500 a month and put it into a bank account for 25 years, you will have $150,000 at the end of those 25 years. Now, investing the same money in the stock market over a 25 year period, with an average return of 9-10%, to you will get back over a million dollars. This is the power of compound interest, and this is what gets people wealthy. Now, you may not have $500 a month to save right now, but even saving small amounts will compound over time. The message here, start investing as soon as possible. Time is your greatest ally. Now, when it comes to growing wealth, for me, investment property is our main focus. We purchase multifamily properties, add value, refinance them with the bank, and put renters in them to cover the mortgage and our overheads. We are building a portfolio of properties across Canada that's building wealth through appreciation and increased property values. We also get rental income each month that we can use to fund our lifestyle, or even better, to invest and grow our wealth on another front. Now, being a contractor with my own renovation company, this is my dream job. I love renovations, even more so when they're done on my own properties. I get to put in all my years experience to maximize my returns on each one. I am truly working for myself and it is awesome. Now we take this a step further by borrowing the funds to purchase the property and do the renovations. So instead of tying up my money in the deal, I actually invest it in other ventures and maximize my returns. It really is a triple win. So whether you start investing small amounts in the stock market or go all out and buy an investment property, anybody can build wealth starting from zero. For everybody, the greatest tool is time. So the earlier we start investing, the greater returns we're gonna get. Those on low incomes can develop a side hustle or a secondary income to produce the funds to invest. And those with higher incomes can do the same. Get a secondary source of income and use that to invest. Remember, after time, money is our greatest tool. Personal investment will develop a growth mindset with books, a network, and a mentor. Moving in the same direction with others, building wealth, will help you navigate the obstacles and challenges that would never believe spring up along the way. And even buying your first investment property to build a portfolio can be done with zero down. We have done just that with our first property and everyone since. By using other people's money, we are able to purchase, renovate, tenant and refinance a property. In fact, by the end of the process, not only do we get the property for free, but we actually get a bit of tax-free money in our pocket at the end of it. And if you're interested in more about that, this video here will take you through the steps that we took on our first property and the steps that we followed to this day. Thank you very much for watching the video today. I appreciate you.